Good morning, my friends. April here with Medwell Health and Wellness. I hope that you are well. Welcome to Cannabis Wellness and You series, aka Medwell Unscripted. Um, we're so excited for today's topic. Um, we are going to be talking about tinctures in your wellness. And we have the founder, Peter Glantz from House Tinctures here. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So before we get started, friends, be sure to say hello in the chat. Also, if you have questions, drop a question. I know um, Peter will be happy to answer those for you as we go along. And also, if you're catching the replay today, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, we will absolutely get back to you and answer any questions that we, we can. So, all right, let's get started with introductions. I have Emily Waxman here, our Director of Community Outreach. Hey, Emily. Hello. Good morning. And so I want to start with you, Emily, to tell a little bit about your role here at um, Medwell, and then we'll we'll have Peter tell his awesome story, too. Absolutely. So I am Emily Waxman. I am the uh, community outreach person over here at Medwell Health and Wellness, and I uh, just absolutely love my job so much. I get to be able to work with pe uh, people like Peter that are able to provide education about medical cannabis. And uh, it is super important that we get the word out there to folks about the benefits of medical cannabis, the different options that you can have to dose yourself. That is why I'm so thrilled that we have Peter here today to be able to talk about tinctures. I think it is an amazing product, uh, just has helped so many folks, and it is perfect for all of those people that are particularly new to medical cannabis. So it's always just, uh, I always recommend this product to anyone that I am speaking to that is just a little bit maybe nervous to try uh, you know, something and they're not sure what to begin with. And I always recommend Peter's product because I think it is just a super easy way to, you know, get your feet in the water with, with, you know, trying this and getting some relief for yourself and uh, super excited to have you here today, Peter. So I'll hand the, the rest of the introduction over to you. Thank you, Emily. It's great to uh, be here with you and April. And I, you know, I first just want to appreciate Medwell. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, uh, like you said, it's so important to educate people. And I think in the, you know, the history uh, of cannabis, um, there's always such an important role of those guides or those experts or those people who can inform uh, those looking uh, to benefit from it. And uh, especially uh, people with the expertise of, of the nurses and doctors who you work with. Uh, for people um, to become comfortable and and find relief uh, through the right. through cannabis, so I just you know I thank you for all the work that you're all doing. And, thank you um, so much. Happy, um, and uh, I'm happy to be here and share uh, what I have to offer in the same vein. Uh, the, Peter, tell uh, us a little bit about your kind of your role as the founder of House. Uh, well, I you know. It started because I was a patient. I am, uh, I have an eye condition, a degenerative um, eye condition, and had a surgery uh, that unfortunately went sideways in uh, in 2012. Um, and I started uh, making cannabis tincture to help relieve the symptoms from that, and it really helped me. Uh, and I, uh, I I was I became part of a co-op with uh, other patients. Uh, where I was able to source the plant material and I was making the tincture for myself and other patients in the co-op asked for some. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I live in Rhode Island uh, and that was uh, at the time, uh, the only way, uh, you know, it, I could gift my, you know, the extra I made and I had more than I could, you know, use for myself. So I gifted it to the other patients and, you know, their response and how much they relied on it and the benefits, you know, this one woman who I, I remember I, I was, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't, I, I made a, you know, I made a label, I got it tested. I wanted to make sure that people felt comfortable and safe using it and knowing how to use it. Uh, and, um, and I, you know, I, I gave four bottles to um, four different patients and then they started asking, you know, for more. And I was busy. I'd been able to get back to work after being out of it for a while because of my condition and the pain. And, um, and when they and then I and I was dismissing it at first. I don't I don't think I really I was still stigmatized cannabis and thought, oh, they don't really need it. It helped me, but not them. And then I, this woman was like, 
she's like, I rely on it. And she had a walker and she pushed it out of the way and she did a little dance. And she was wow. like, I clean, I cleaned my house yesterday for the first time in, in two years. Like I need more. Like I need, I'm, I, this is, uh, you know, uh, I rely on this. And that became sort of that moment and, and all the subsequent ones of talking with patients and people who benefited from this to just be on a mission to make it available to people and, and you know, anyone who can benefit from it. Awesome. Um, and that's, that turned into Howell's Tincture, which is the, um, uh, I guess, way you, you asked of how, it, that's how it started. And since then, I uh, ended up offering it um, to more patients. I couldn't be compliant uh, within the system of Rhode Island, but dispensaries open there. I was fortunate to be able to offer it in Rhode Island and then in Massachusetts uh, since uh, this will be the fourth year we've been in Massachusetts for medical uh, and then uh, the last two years for adult use. Um, and uh, just have learned so much, and um, that that story is just I hear it all the time, and yeah. so I you know some version of it, and so that's uh, you know it continues to give that gift to me, uh, and that's why I love that story. Doing. That's yeah. a great one. You know what? For our newer um, our newer viewers today, I think we I think we should just talk a little bit about what a tincture is, right? Because I think that sometimes, especially somebody coming in new to medical cannabis, they might not. I mean, clearly there's a lot of different products, and I think sometimes people always think it's about smoking. So, can you kind of define what a tincture is? That would be awesome. Sure. Um, so there's uh, there's a couple of well, to, the, I mean, to the definition of, I guess I'm, I'm stumbling a bit because I think there's tincture as it's defined currently by the, um, you know, within the cannabis industry and within Massachusetts. Um, and that's very simple. You know, it's, a, it's a, either an infused uh, oil or, or alcohol. Um, and then uh, I think the, uh, and the, and the reason, and then the other definition, which I think is more of the longer term historical definition is really the infusion with a plant into something like oil and alcohol and capturing the essence and the full beneficial properties of that plant. Um, and so um, uh, it's actually tincture was the most common and most popular form of consuming cannabis up until prohibition in America. Uh, it's been, used uh, as a as a way to uh, get the benefits of cannabis documented for over 5,000 years. Um, and so, uh, you know, the uh, and the way that uh, it's been made for those 5,000 years is just taking the flour. And in our case with Howells, we just put it directly into organic avocado oil, low heat and stirring for a long time. And those full beneficial properties of the flour just infuse into the tincture. Um, so uh, that's in, you know, some other tinctures uh, that'll be the same form of liquid are using extraction, more modern techniques where they pull out just individual cannabinoids and put them in. So I, I guess I'm getting a little complicated. So I want to step back and just explain for those people who are new, just why people like the form of it. And then I can sort of explain a little why, why those different methods matter in terms of your decision of how you want it, uh, of what might work for you. Um, so, you know, at the very core, it's just really like it's in a bottle like this <laughs> and it's got a uh, and people generally like the form of tincture because it's so simple to use. You right. just, you know, take it out, you drop it in your mouth and you swallow. Uh, you have the option also of putting it under your tongue and holding it there. And that has a little bit of a faster onset. Um, the uh, but that's, you know, that's, you know, for the, there's no lighters, there's no you know, torches, there's no, uh, you know, electricity. Uh, it's as simple as this. You just drop in your mouth and swallow. Um, and is the other part- oh. Sorry, is there different flavors or taste to it? Like what would be the expectation of how it would taste? Well, that's great. So I, well, you know, for, for the tinctures that we make, it tastes like the actual flower of, of cannabis. So okay. the flavor is really determined both, it tastes like avocado oil and it combined with, the flavor of the flower. And so each strain we use has slightly different flavors depending on, you know, um, what the, these things called terpenes and flavonoids, which give, give the scent and flavor to cannabis. So, um, so you can expect an earthy floral flavor combined with avocado oil. Um, and and with, what's wonderful too, Peter, is that 
the uh, different strains are also what is helpful with what someone might be suffering from. So if you are, you know, having difficulty sleeping, you have a tincture for, you know, helping with sleep or, you know, the, there's different ones depending upon what strain you're using uh, when you're producing that particular tincture, correct? Yeah. So that's, that's why um, we, yeah. So for example, like you're talking about, we have a, we have a nighttime tincture, yeah. which is made with a strain called um, that's an indica in the indica family, which is uh, people may know is generally uh, considered ones that are relaxing. Uh, and, and so that's what um, we use a strain called LA Kush cake and that, uh, and many people use that to relieve uh, the symptoms that are preventing them from falling asleep. So, uh, you know, they don't say it just like turns off your, you know, turn like knocks you out. It like relieves the pain and the anxiety yeah. or those things that are going on and allows you to, your body to do what it does naturally and fall asleep. And one of the big things about tincture when it comes to sleep and, 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 and it, in particular is that it, uh, it lasts like, unlike smoking, which is like, it lasts like, you know, 45 minutes and it comes back down. So some people will smoke right before they sleep and it kind of makes them crash. But with the tincture, you ease into sleep, but it also goes through your metabolism. And, it, and while you're sleeping, that slows down. So it helps people stay asleep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not just that first hour and then waking up and needing to go back, you know, be struggling to go back to sleep. A lot of that, that's the big thing we hear from people is that it's not just the helping fall asleep, but it's staying asleep through the night, which this really helps with because it slowly moves through your body and keeps that relief through the night. Which is wonderful because for those folks that are, you know, maybe recuperating from an operation or they're in pain, you know, you're, you're healing when you're sleeping. So it's really important that those folks that are, you know, uh, need to get that rest are able to you know, <coughs> take that tincture and know that they can put together some important time for sleeping. And, and that will really, in essence, help them heal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I it's for people, you know, whatever spectrum of conditions or symptoms you have, you know, sleep is, you know, is so critical for healing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big, I guess, in my understanding experience with cannabis medicine and with the tincture in particular is that it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily fix your, you know, underlying condition Correct. or problem. You know, my eye right. condition wasn't, wasn't like fixed. What it did was that it helped me have a new relationship with the pain that it was causing right. and change, allowed me to shift my focus. And so a lot of it is this whole, with sleeping, it's like the cannabis or the tincture can help you sleep and the sleep then helps you heal. And Absolutely. so it's really, so it really is that, that supporting your body's ability to heal by balancing it and, and, and uh, relieving those symptoms that can mm. really be so distracting from Absolutely. actually the core focus. Um, I did want to mention just in terms of just how to use it because we it's so fun to get into these deeper conversations. But the the aside from the, the other reason people like tincture and in and in particular, of course, Al's has always been doing this is that the um, there's a measured dropper. So it might not be that easy to see on the screen, but uh, there's markers that are like a one milliliter, a, you know, a three quarters, half a milliliter, a quarter milliliter, and so uh, when the, it's always formulated to the same potency. So, you know, once you find the right amount for you, say, you know, I met someone the other day who's just, they, every night they take a half a milliliter of the nighttime and it helps them sleep and just, they just do that each night. So you can, once you find the right amount for you, you can rely on it. So that consistency is mm -hmm. uh, a really big thing and that control, because for me, I was using it, uh, I, the reason, you know, I needed it. Obviously, I wanted to relieve my pain, but I worked as a, a touring concert director and a festival producer, and I had to be very present. And I had to, you know, work with every the technical team and the creative team and the band and and you know, venues and all these things, all within a really compressed period of time. And so, having this um, pain in my eyes made it hard to, uh, you know, surging suddenly and made me distracted. It was hard to be present in this really focused environment. And so when cannabis was suggested to me, I was like, I, maybe it'll help with my pain, but am I really going to do the things I want to do, work, be with my family? And um, and that's when a friend suggested uh, tincture because, and it, I'd been making them for, uh, you know, with other plants for 15 years before then. And it was really at that moment, I was like, oh, it's just a plant. I can make a tincture from it. And the real, the, the biggest reason why 
that was different than smoking for me at that time was because I can control it. And so I was able to find the amount that gave me the relief I needed to be able to focus and do, do you know, do the other things in my life that were important, like my work or being with my family um, or, you know, and, 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 you know, building community and all those things. So that, that's, um, that, that control aspect is a big reason that tincture is so good because once you find that amount, you can uh, rely on it. And, and also you can adjust, you know, in a pretty, you can adjust, you know, one day you might be having more severe symptoms, you can increase it and you know kind of what the result will be. And mm -hmm. also, you know, I've, I've also had people say that they, you know, they start at a higher level and over time they start to like, they actually start going down because they can find even like a little bit lower what still maintains what they need. And they are in those, you know, those pathways and those experiences of comfort get built into their body too. So they don't require as much always. So right. that's, a, that's great. a big, yeah. So that's, that control is a huge part of why I think people like it. And I know for me and, and the discretion, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, I also, it was the music industry, but it wasn't particularly, it wouldn't be that great for me to be like smoking a joint um, <laughs> while uh, trying to like run the show. I mean, I know that in the movies that looks that, you know, they, they, not, that wasn't the show that I was working on. And so, it, so uh, and, and I, you know, I, I think that would be fine if that was medicine people needed. I had no stigma about that, but at the time I felt that that was really important. I didn't want to be, I, and that, so the discretion to be able to take it without being right. uh, perceived as being uh, you know, unable, you know, the perception of being a stoner in, and the, and the outcome of that can be really yes. difficult for people yeah, who are just right. trying to work and live when other people are perceiving you because of their stigma. So, uh, so tincture is very helpful in that discretion as well. When you want to, when you want to have the benefits, but not have, uh, everybody sort of looking at you and, and smelling, and judging right. what you're doing. Absolutely. And plus, we have a lot of patients, too, that I'm sure, you know, live in the city. They might live in, you know, with with neighbors very close by or there's, you know, housing authorities that have, you know, certain rules that maybe, you know, you can't smoke. So this is a beautiful way to be able to dose yourself and not have that odor lingering around that might bother, uh, you know, a neighbor close by. Yeah. And the... It all and it also Sorry. does also a lot of people on their lungs um they they're appreciating that uh absolutely having, having yeah a, anyone with a lung issue mm -hmm. yeah so do you find that um so we talked you mentioned sleep for wellness do you find that there's different um illnesses or ailments that tinctures work better for um do you find that as a, a question so you guys have uh, a very social active even though your um uh, people come to the dispensaries to buy your product you have a very active social um social presence and i'm sure you get asked certain questions do you find that certain ailments are better um with tinctures as opposed to smoking um yeah i mean a lot of it is uh I mean, I can tell you that first off, that's you know, sixty-seven percent of the. I mean, there was a survey of all the um, patients in Massachusetts a few years ago are using it for uh, insomnia, chronic pain, or anxiety, and yeah. so those are the really most common uh, um, uh, conditions that people are using it for. And so they just, it's really then they choose and find the right formula that's right for their. Mm -hmm. uh, need um, and and if, and then from there, there's so many different uh, conditions. I mean, if you're, um, I mean, it's a lot about how people want to want to use it because and how uh, and and for people who are who use it regularly, a lot of it is about people who have that chron chronic conditions like that, and this is a way to manage it on a day to day basis. And so it really. Uh, and almost every condition comes with, it seems like one of those things too, insomnia, anxiety, <laughs> uh, or pain. And yeah. so, uh, so we find that, you know, there's so I, we don't, um, uh, well, you know, I, I certainly hear themes of, you know, a lot of people with fibromyalgia, a lot of people who are, uh, recovering or in, uh, you know, with cancer and, and doing chemotherapy and it helps doing that with the appetite and the reduced nausea. I, you know, we hear a lot about, um, People would just, uh, you know, just sort of arthritis and the, you know, uh, those aches and pains of aging and just being able to manage those. Um, and like Emily said, people who are looking after a surgery, 
Uh, and you know, so many people say they got prescribed an opioid and right. they don't want to take it. They're nervous about it. And so they, this seems like a safer place they feel comfortable starting. And so a lot of people will use it uh, uh, as a way to manage uh, the recovery uh, without having to use opioids. And that's, um, that's a big, that's been, you know, so, you know, it's, it's uh, been a big theme, especially, you know, uh, more recently of a lot of people who had been uh, on, uh, using opioids, really transitioning off and using the tincture instead. So, the, you know, and that's a, in, in a way, it's also because of that controllability, I think, as well as uh, able to relieve the, you know, the court, the pain uh, sure. without that addictive property. Can you, uh, so I actually was reading, so there's CBD tinctures and there's um, THC. Like, can you talk a little bit about kind of what the difference or um, is there a difference between the two? Uh, yeah, you know, I, we have a, I guess, I mean, there's a difference between the two and then there's a, a bigger sort of uh, thing I'd like to share maybe uh, is that, well, I'll start with this, that CBD and THC are, are cannabinoids. And many of you out there may know it, I'm sure April and Emily are aware of it, but for those who are, who are new to this, um, you know, they're, CBD and THC are cannabinoids and they're very well known and, and, and famous and generally CBD is, uh, we found people, it really helps people when they have an in inflammation-based um, issue okay. um, and that the, um, the THC is uh, really helpful um, and it's in another way that is I, I really like to share because the um, because there's been so much promotion of CBD as the medicine and THC is like party yeah. uh, and that's a real disservice because I mean CBD right. is certainly very beneficial but as someone who's used it as a medical patient and as someone who's you know, how is the most popular medical tincture in New England? Tens of thousands of people rely on it. We've, you know, so many patients, even just the sales numbers, we can see that the THC is a huge benefit for people. Yeah. And so the people kind of, uh, and the reason that I think that is, is because of, um, you know, uh, that, you know, pain, for example, you know, as you would know, you know, I learned from a doctor that pain is defined as a perception. Like that's literally how doctors are taught that pain is a perception. So, and can, and so there's a signal that, you know, you've got a problem, it goes to your brain and the reaction causes pain. So um, cannabis is a perception shifting plant and THC in particular is the catalyst for a lot of that perception change. So when you're looking at THC products and their benefits, it's a lot about that. It's um, it changes your relationship to that signal. And so it changes your perception of your own pain. And that's, that's the, it's a, and that's for some people why it's a way to manage it and then focus on the thing that's gonna really fix your, or help heal your problem. So for me, for example, my eyes, I had this pain that would rush from my eyes and I started to stop being like, ah, that, so, that hurt so much and became like, oh, there's that problem I have. I, I, I can't fix it, but I know it's there. And I started to change my relationship to it. And that led me to just opening my mind and my time, my focus to other things. And those became very, uh, you know, it, it, what led me to, you know, starting Howls and working with patients and having the space and time for that I had a lot to do with being able to um, manage that pain. So the THC side I find is, uh, and that's why it's so helpful. I mean, for, um, for those like pain and anxiety, insomnia, there's so much about how you're reacting to the world around you. Um, but that I do want to take a moment just to also, because those get so much um, promotion, CBD and THC, and that's kind of going back to the way that uh, the way that the tincture is made and why that's an important part of sort of your decision about what might be right for you. Because um, uh, with the especially you know in the last 10 or 20 years with the development of the you know commercial marketplace there's been a lot of uh, uh changes in how people you know take the plant and turn it into something like tincture into other products and so what they um and that is uh, most every tincture is made with uh, extraction process where they're just pulling out that cbd and thc but what I want to share is that there's a, you know, there's 113 cannabinoids in the plant and CBD and THC are just two of them. Wow. 
and that and that I mean some people say there's more, but those we know are documented. And the thing we have this thing in our bodies, which is like this is the amazing thing. And I'm sure you're aware of it, but for anyone who isn't, like this has been this was shifted my perception about this entirely was understanding that all of our bodies as human beings has this thing called an endocannabinoid system. And what that has is receptors in your body, all throughout your body that fit like Lego pieces with those cannabinoids. And so then, so that's, the result is when you have something that has that full spectrum of not just those two CBD or THC, but you know, the remaining hundred or so cannabinoids that are in the plant, plus the terpenes that are in there and the flavonoids, which are other properties that people uh, speculate are part of the, you know, the, the the benefits, even the chlorophyll in there is something you can go buy at Whole Foods. But when you just strip out just one or two cannabinoids and you're taking those, you know, they did a, um, a study in Israel with five universities that showed that, you know, the significantly higher efficacy with a whole plant preparation versus these extracted individual cannabinoids. Um, and then also that tolerance doesn't go up uh, nearly as fast. When you have that extracted just THC or CBD, people's tolerances shoot up. If any of you out there are using edibles and you're like, I started with one, now I'm using four or five, that's, it's okay. most of those are all made with this distillate that are just sort of extracted cannabinoids. And so tolerance shoots up. But when you have the whole plant preparation, you know, like that guy I mentioned, half a milliliter a day for two years now, it's the same thing. So uh, it's because, and then, so all this is to get at, as you know, there's, I, I don't know how many conditions, over 120, how many conditions you can be, certified in Massachusetts for oh, over 200 uh, over 200 what other medicine is 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 useful for over 200 conditions right. and i think it has to do i mean i speculate a lot of people do it's that it's a balancing the system so it's not that it goes and targets some specific condition but it helps balance that system and that provides you so a cushion and space to work on healing that's really, I, I know we have a quick question, but I'm, I'm just so happy that you had that beautiful explanation, Peter, because I can't tell you how many times I, I'll have someone come up to my table at an educational event and, and they, you know, tell me they don't want anything with THC. And, you know, it, it really has got such a bad rap. And, uh, you know, you just explained beautifully how, you know, you really do need to have that in there to really get the full benefits of you know, what, what you're taking. And so I'm so glad that you were able to really explain that in a, a simple way. So people understand that it's not this scary thing that, that they're ingesting, that they're not going to be flying off the walls with it. You know, they really do need to have that in there to, to really, you know, feel the full effect of, of what they're going to be, you know, taking for themselves. So thank you so much for that. It's a great, yeah. uh, it's a great topic for a blog post for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then for the, for people, I understand being nervous, especially yeah. whether you haven't used it before or your last experience was a lot of people have the experience of right. you know, someone gave them a brownie one day and it was like a very difficult uh, right. overconsumption experience. Yeah. That's why tincture is, is so helpful is that you can, if you're yes. anxious about that, but you're curious about how this can help you, this, you can start with one drop which right. is, uh, you know, and just, and then you can go up to a few drops and get up to a place where you start to, you know, see what the effect is and become yeah. comfortable with it. And that's a really, you know, that's, a, I think a, that's a huge part of why people uh, start with tincture because when you smoke, you know, it's very fast and strong right. and it's hard to control. Um, so this, this controllability from a small place uh, helps people ease in just right. uh, with that concern and then end up getting the benefits. Awesome. So there's a question from Jonathan. Um, Hi, Peter. I have trouble with pain in my shoulder. I've tried almost everything. Would Howl's help relieve the inflammation? Uh, well, thank you, Jonathan. It's a good question. And in that case, I would, you know, uh, that's what we hear. A lot of people with pain, like that kind of like shoulder pain or knee pain, and it's chronic. Um, the They'll use the, uh, we have a high CBD that's a, a 10 to 1 ratio of CBD to THC and that people will use uh, for inflammation based chronic issues. And one thing to know about it is that people kind of say it's cumulative. So you start, it's more they use it like a daily supplement and then it helps to reduce that inflammation based pain over time. And then uh, what I'd recommend is then if you 
uh, is that you can also use one of the THC dominant ones and maybe start finding your own ratio by taking a little bit more yeah. and seeing how that benefit is. So, I mean, of course, Jonathan, I wish I could guarantee you it would help. Uh, uh, that's, but I, I can't guarantee, but I can tell you that a lot of uh, people who have that same question or that experience, you know, we, we hear all the time that, that it's very helpful for that, for pain, uh, inflammation-based pain, joint pain, um, back pain, and shoulder so, pain. So Peter, last year we had you on MedWall Unscripted and you've grown your, you've grown your footprint, right? Significantly. So why don't you tell our audience about where they can, uh, where they can find you? I'm going to drop your website here. I know you have a list, but like, Tell them, uh, give them some background of where they can pick up the tinctures and uh, where you are out and about. Sure. Um, they are uh, available throughout Massachusetts. Um, the easiest way to find uh, the one closest to you is through howls.com, uh, where there's a list uh, of all the dispensaries we're in, both medical and adult use. Um, they're, you know, we're out in Western Mass and the Berkshires. Uh, and in Central Mass and Worcester and Amherst and Springfield uh, up through, um, you know, in the, I guess I, I'm just going to list, but, you know, the South Coast, you go on, I'd say the best thing is to look at howls.com. I, I, there's so many good partners out there. And if you're a patient, you know, we have it listed separately at the, the medical dispensaries. And, and we are going to be, um, and we're in about uh, 30 places now and we're, uh, we, we commit to continuous availability. So that's part of it is that we have expanded our footprint, but we do it in chunks so that we can add places, but we can, we can commit to making sure that it's always available once we've added it so that people become to rely on it. They can count on it, which is a big part of what, uh, what's important to us. So we're now uh, this uh, March planning to add uh, another chunk of them. So if there's anywhere Anyone out there, if there's a dispensary that you would like to see us in or an area that, you know, you look at that list and wish somewhere's closer, uh, you know, please let us know because uh, we're about to start on that endeavor. Um, and if you're a dispensary out there, you know, and I think this would be good for you, of course, uh, let us know. Also, you can go to the site, find out how to contact us. Awesome. Well, Peter, thank you. You know, it's always a pleasure to have you on our show and learn about tinctures. And um, yeah, it's it, I love your story. And one thing I would do want to ask, which I haven't asked, is so the wolf and howls. How did that? How did you pick that for your your branding? Um, well, that that was the mo <laughs> it was really because of when I first uh, when other patients first asked for some, and I wanted to, and I made a label because I wanted to make sure that they knew what they were getting. Uh, and I, you know, I, I got it tested so I could put the potency on there and I, I put the ingredients and how to use it. But I really wanted to put something on there that would reflect what you could expect. Uh, and so I, uh, I thought of the wolf. Um, and at first it was because, uh, you know, the tincture had helped me feel independent and in control in a way that I felt that like the wolf represented. But you know, after ruminating briefly, I realized that it was that was a small part of it. It was really that since using the tincture, I, I had reconnected with my friends and my family. I had stopped being so distracted by this pain and anxiety, and was able to to uh, to reconnect with those important people in my community and in my life. And that and that uh, and so it's really about the social aspect of the wolf and the pack. And um, that being, you know, connected with your pack and your community is the most is one of the most healing benefits of using this uh, this medicine, I think. Um, and so that's what the wolf represents. And so, love it. Um, uh, I knew that was really cool. I never knew that. I yeah. love that story. Um, yeah. All right, my friends, Emily, thank you so much. Um, thank, thank you, Peter. You. And definitely learn where you can find house tinctures at house.com. If you are in need of your medical cannabis license, feel free to drop by medwellhealth.net. You can schedule telehealth online. Plus, we have uh, eight locations throughout Massachusetts, as well as we have locations in Florida. Um, and if you just have a question, friends, give us a call. We are here to answer any um, any of your questions. Um, no question. Uh, it, we're here to help. Our team is- um, No question's a bad question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
And again, friends, if you are catching the replay, feel free to leave a comment. We will absolutely be sure to get back to you. And sharing is caring. Feel free to share this live stream, whether you are on YouTube or you are on Facebook. Share with your friends on, you know, Cannabis Wellness and You series. We are here to um, live your best life and share all of this good information and get the word out there. So sharing is caring. Hit share and share with your friends. All right, my friends, we look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 10 a.m. Thank you again, Peter. Thank you again, Emily. And everybody have a fabulous day. Take care.